Hara, Haftigal of the Skorda, Steve. It's a pleasure to be here. Um, I just want to briefly say that I first became aware of Code Jojo uh, about a little over a year ago. I didn't know what it was. So I was asked to visit Bill and James down in Cork, and I went down. And I must say I was blown away by what they were doing and the way they explained it to me, and the potential in particular in both in terms of what it can do for kids, probably creating a career, but more importantly in enjoying themselves in a fun atmosphere and developing talents and learning all about the technology and coding and so forth. So I think it's also wonderful that it has been done on a, a voluntary basis. And it reminds me a small bit, Bill, of uh, the GA when it was founded in 1884, started off and uh, it was slow getting going, but then all of a sudden it took off. And the phrase that was used was it took off like a prairie fire. And I think uh, you were beginning to do that last week, you were in the Silicon Valley. So in actual fact, Silicon Valley always exports innovation technology, but for once they were actually importing it. And you made us very proud because it was good for Ireland, and it was good for everybody and what you're doing. So that's wonderful. Uh, I would agree with the minister that it should stay out of the formal school curriculum because I would, if it went into the formal school curriculum it would be like making hurling and football compulsory, putting it on as an exam subject, enjoyment would go out of it. But obviously the challenge is, the same as in the GA, to have mentors, enough people willing to give their time freely to develop it. But I'm quite sure with Bill and James leading it and as it develops, uh, more and more people will come forward, especially when they see the benefit for kids, because that's really what we're about, helping the next generation. More more people come forward. Now, uh, Bill asked me could I do something about bringing it to uh, the European oh. Parliament in Brussels, and I said I'd certainly look into it. I looked into it and I said uh, next January, Ireland takes over the presidency of the European Union. That's uh, something that happens uh, only once every 14 years now, because next year we'll have 28 countries. And basically, the country that has the rotating presidency sets the agenda and leads the agenda and moves forward the agenda. So there's a great opportunity, there's a great profile. So on January 29th, next, in the European Parliament, I'll be bringing a uh, call to Jojo to the Parliament. And I think there will be a very receptive audience because uh, I can see myself, in particular in relation to iPads and smartphones, how more and more MEPs are using them. Uh, in print MEP speak in Parliament, some like myself would speak off the cuff, but the vast majority would, even if they're only speaking for a minute, they would read out what they have to say. And uh, one night about uh, a year and a half ago, uh, one person read their speech, and the next thing the President announced, he said, history was made here tonight because it's the first time that somebody has uh, read their speech from an iPad. And of course now they all have their speeches on iPads. So it, in the broader sense also, Europe has lost a lot in terms of competitiveness. Ireland did it, or Europe did it as well. The industrial basis has declined to about 16% uh, of the world. They're hoping to bring it back up to about 20%, but it's never going to grow much beyond that because it's very difficult to compete with China and other countries where labor is cheaper and so forth. So if Europe is to come competitive, it's through uh, smart, inclusive growth as I talk about developing the knowledge economy, and for that, of course, uh, the whole technology area is going to be vital. So I think in that sense, the potential of Coda Dojo to create that climate for that development is going to be very exciting as well for parliamentarians and for the broader community in Europe as well. So I think uh, that this is going to be very exciting for people, and hopefully it will be the start of creating another prairie fire. And if you're successful as the GA, then this is going to go on and on for years and years to come. So well done. Thanks very much. Thank you. I have one quick question. I have one quick question. You know, um, all programming languages are essentially based on English. And I think Ireland has a pretty tremendous strategic advantage in Europe being the only Euro member that, it, that, that natively speaks English. How, how far do you think we might take that advantage if we can get more visibility for Ireland in, in, in programming? Yeah, I think you're right. Uh, 
English is the working language, basically, of uh, the European Union. While within Parliament, uh, there are interpreters, as they're called, who translate from one language to another. Sorry, while within Parliament, there are those who interpret from one language to another. But if there are no interpreters available, it's English is the language. <coughs> and especially where Ireland is concerned, I think, a lot of people talk about Ireland's uh, corporation tax has been crucial for foreign direct investment, but the fact that we're the English language and the gateway to Europe is also vital. So I think certainly it's a great advantage and we would be able to do it. Also, more and more uh, countries and MEPs and people coming to Brussels are actually competent in English. Certainly anybody from Germany East can speak English. Those would be mainly French, maybe Italians, from Sp Spanish, they wouldn't, but that's changing rapidly as well. Yeah, it's a, it's a funny point on the English, actually. When um, Coder Dojo in Tokyo opened up, um, you know, teaching the kids HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, and um, their language, Hirakana, is all based on symbols. So, you know, you're teaching them how to do, like, the body tag, and they're like, what the hell is a D? So it's pretty pretty <laughs> funny to see this whole localization thing and language thing as, as Coder Dojo grows. Um, I remember launching Coda Dojo Florence, and there's a lot of um, uh, translating going on. And I said, well, our one rule is, is be cool. And uh, the Italians looked at me and said, this is natural for Italians. 